Welcome back to RG Geek. So last week we talked about the Xiaomi Mi TV 4A and I'd like to continue on with that. So as a refresher from last week, this is a TV with 8 gigabytes of storage, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and runs Android TV 9 and a pretty vanilla version of it I'd have to say, which is really good. So today I want to show you RetroArch side so load on this TV. So here's here the the famous 8-bit SN30 Pro Plus controller. So I'm going to start it with Start B to go into Android mode. I've already paired it with the TV. So it should just load straight up. There it goes. And I can even control the menu directly with the controller, which is really nice as well. So hit A to go in. I want to say if you want to ever side load RetroArch onto a TV, I'd recommend first going into the settings, go down to input, and then go down to hotkeys, and make sure the menu toggle controller combo is set to something. I set it to L3 plus R3, because if you don't do this, you'll enter a game and you'll have no way to exit your game. So I recommend L3 R3, so pushing both of these buttons, but you can set it to whatever you want. All right, let's go back and I'll show you some games on here. So this runs up to PlayStation 1. Let's try, let's put on Need for Speed. And use this one. Let's go in. You see it loads up pretty quick here. I love this intro. Alright, let's get into the game. Let's see a little bit of gameplay here. And all the buttons just worked right out of the box. I didn't have to set up any configuration or anything. Just get straight into a race. It's a simple race. <laughs> I think Proving Grounds is what it's called. I always like to change this camera angle. And yeah, it plays great. So I'm going to exit by hitting L3, R3, and that'll put me back in here where I can close the content. And I scanned all this stuff in beforehand, and this all scanned my games in great here. Uh, Sega CD also works well. And then here, sorry, Fahrenheit. Here's the Sega Genesis Plus GX Core. And for the most part, I've found that pretty much this TV will run anything that the RJ350M will run. So if you're familiar with this handheld, then the TV will run pretty much everything this can. Nice. So I'm not going to go too far into here. You just see it runs. Let's go back, go to my history, pick some games out quick. Super Mario All-Stars is always a good one. Yeah, I found with the Sega 32X, some games work, some games don't. So 
That's just hit or miss. So I guess the TV is slightly lower chipset than the RG350M. But this is also outputting to a 720p screen, whereas the RG350M has a 480p screen. But anyway, see here, works great. Kill some Goombas. And I don't feel any lag at all here, just plays great. Alright, so let's get out of here. Maybe show one more game or two. Let's see. I'm always curious if these systems run Atari 7800 well. In here. Okay, this is Atari 7800 comes a bit loud in this TV. I'll crank it down a bit. And again, works perfect, just like you expect. Okay, so if something plays 7800, it's going to play well. Actually, the uh, RG350M has sound issues with um, the 7800. This TV plays them perfectly. Well, it's retro hearts. That's what you expect. Okay, so exit out of this. And let's see. Let's look at some Sega Genesis Outrun real quick. And then everything loads up. Nice and quick. And remember, all this is running straight off the TV. There's like, it's not coming from some box connected to it. It's directly on the TV. So I was even saying before, if I was getting another TV, I might consider getting a Xiaomi. It's just so nice, so flexible. Something I can add here, but I'm just a fan. The only issues we found were, like in the YouTube app, for some reason we couldn't change accounts. Which is a pain. Oh, I'm trying to remember what other issues we had with the TV. Um, that was mostly it. Oh, we, it also doesn't run the um, Apple TV Plus app. So if you really want, like if you have all your library on Apple TV, you'll have to figure out some other way to tell you on here. You can sideload. Well, we tried sideloading the Apple TV app, but it just um, failed. So, even tried um, going to a, another website too, to because you can run a browser on here as well. And we couldn't get that to work either. So we actually have a Fire, an Amazon Fire TV stick hooked up to this tree used for Apple TV, which is actually more powerful than this TV. But it's nice to have options. So, so let's continue with my floating car. One last game. Let's look at uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition on the 32X. Iguana. <laughs> Get that very game quick. I pick Chicago. Ah, uh, that's right. This is the version where Michael Jordan refused to have his. Uh, Likeness in the game. Oh, that's right, he chose all the way. Always not to do that in NBA Jam. Yeah, that's where it's pretty shot from. <laughs> Shoot from there. But anyway, I'm not used to these controls, but it works fine. Oh, and it looks really good with the 32x graphics. I usually recommend this if you can choose which home version to use. I think the Saturn one's really good too, though. But anyway, you get to see a little bit of how this runs on here. I've been super happy with it. Everything works great. Up to PlayStation, I tried some Dreamcast as well. The Dreamcast didn't really go well. It 
crashed on load. I tried Nintendo 64 that also crashed on load. But if all you want to play is up to PlayStation, you're good to go with this. And this TV costs, uh, well, when we bought it, it was 190 euros. I saw it once cheaper for 170 euros. I don't know if these sell in the United States, but I like it. I think it's a really nice TV. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time on RG Geek.